What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and it is Vega Embargo Day, which means your inbox is obviously exploded with Vega 64 and Vega 56 all over your subscription feed. And this video is no exception, but hey, at least I made an embargo date. Now there is a whole lot of information to talk about with the new Vega architecture, and I'm not planning on going really deep down that rabbit hole. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of good news outlets and journalism in the tech realm that are gonna be covering all of that stuff. So the information is there if you wanna find it. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of things here. I'm gonna talk about gaming and I'm gonna talk about compute because I feel like this card definitely fills a gap where there is a need. And we're gonna do kind of a quick rundown of specs. So the Vega 64, it's got 64 compute units. That's why it's called Vega 64. And can you guess how much the 56 has? Yep, you're right, 48 of them. No, I'm just kidding, obviously that's 56. Um, when it comes to core speed here, we have got a 1247 megahertz uh, clock speed on the 64 with a turbo clock of 1546. So obviously the improvement in clock speed is there versus Fiji and what we saw on Fury, because that was sitting right around 1150 if I remember correctly. And then the Vega 56 comes in at 1156 megahertz with a 1471 megahertz turbo clock. So I'm impressed to see that they've been able to pull more clock speed out of uh, the HBM2, especially with where they came from HBM1. Now I know why you guys are here. It's because you guys are interested in gaming performance, but trust me when I say there is way more to these cards than just game performance. But you also have to kind of know where they stack up. So there was a lot of anticipation that HBM2 and Vega was gonna come out and just decimate the 1080 Ti when it comes to high-end gaming. And unfortunately, that's not where it's placed in the lineup. It's not placed against the 1080 Ti, nowhere near the Titan X Pascal. It's actually in the market for gaming anyways to butt right up against the GTX 1080. There it is right there. So if I can put it up there without falling. Oh, there we go. And then the Vega 56, as you can probably guess by now, is placed against the 1070. I don't wanna knock that over. So that's basically what you're gonna see right now on these benchmarks as we move forward. 64 versus 1080 and 56 versus 1070. So with all that talking out of the way, let's just go ahead and get right to the numbers. Now let's talk about a couple of things with those benchmarks that you just saw. Obviously, all four of these cards are Founders Edition cards. All four of these cards will hit their temperature max if you allow them to. So what I did to try and level the playing field was I upped the fan curve on all four of these cards slightly, but I didn't touch core clock, I didn't touch memory clock, power target, none of that stuff. I just didn't want the cooler themselves to be holding back the performance of the core, considering the fact that there are going to be custom cards available for Vega, which will alleviate a lot of the uh, temperature headroom, which we are bumping our head up against. And obviously there are custom 1080 cards available on the market as well. The other thing too is when it comes to price, I used pricing for the standard air-cooled card and not the limited edition card because there's no performance difference between those cards. I confirmed with AMD that the only difference is the aesthetics of the shroud and the backplate, it has nothing to do with performance increase uh, with this card whatsoever. Obviously the liquid cooled card, right, which wasn't even included in today's video, does cost more and has better cooling and more overhead, overclocking headroom and all that stuff. So we're not even talking about that today. So that's why for pricing, I used the black cooler like you see on the 56 right here that's also available on the 64. Now, if you paid close attention to those benchmarks, you'd see there's a pretty interesting picture that's been painted here in what NVIDIA has done between two different series of cards, the 70 series and 80 series, obviously on Pascal, and the 56 and the 64, and that AMD seems to have brought the performance of these cards closer together than NVIDIA did with their 70 and 80 series card. So you've got the Vega 56, which is beating the 1070 in just about everything, but you've got the 1080, which is edging out the Vega 64 in just about everything. But of course there, is some, there were some strange uh, outcomes here, where for instance, in Metro Last Light, it really seemed to favor the NVIDIA cards, where it definitely pulled way ahead of both Vega 56 and 64. But if you took a look at the division, then the Vega pulled way ahead 
of the Pascal cards. And then if you look at Wildlands, which again is a, although it's a Tom Clancy game, it's not the same developers or the same engine. There's a modified engine there used in Wildlands. Nvidia pulled ahead again. So it really depends on the titles. And I'm hoping that there's gonna be some optimization as time goes on in terms of being able to fully leverage the amount of raw horsepower that exists in Vega. Because if you wanna talk raw horsepower, there's definitely more of it in Vega than there is in Pascal, at least the 70 and 80 series Pascal, if you take a look at its compute performance. Because, and I'm, and I'm looking at notes here because I don't wanna get these numbers wrong here. If we talk about Vega 64 here, Vega 64 has 12.6 gigaflops of performance when it comes to floating point performance versus the 8.2 gigaflops found in the GTX 1080. Now, if you're using software that can actually take advantage of that type of compute power, then you're gonna get a much better value with the 64 at a slightly lesser price point than the GTX 1080, giving you a more rounded experience where your GPU is more useful in more situations than just quote unquote gaming. Now, looking at the Vega 56, it's pretty impressive because at the $400 price point, they have exceeded the 10 gigaflops performance uh, figures when it comes to floating point at 10.5 versus only 5.7 on the GTX 1070. So double the uh, floating point performance when it comes to the 1070. So again, the same situation where if you, and Premier loves, you know, Premier will take advantage of the horsepower in Vega big time. So it really depends on what you're doing with your graphics cards. And there's always more than just gaming when it comes to GPUs, especially in today's day and age, right? Obviously I hate to even mention it, but cryptocurrency has been taking advantage of graphics cards. You guys have seen what has happened to pricing because of it. And, uh, Man, I, I, I'm kind of fearful for the market for these Vega cards if they're just as good or that much better. Um, but yeah, you can see that if you're looking for pro workflow and uh, with the amount of stuff that's locked down on the 1070 and 1080, just how much they, they want to force people into their pro series of cards to get that level of performance, AMD is just laying it all out there. It's completely unlocked, available, everything's there. They're not, they're not stripping down features at a software level. And uh, that's a good thing, obviously. Now let's go ahead and talk about thermals and power consumption for a minute, because that's important too, right? With all of that compute stuff out of the way in gaming, this is another huge portion of what these cards, you know, it, that you should consider. Uh, there's actually three power profiles per BIOS on here, and there's two BIOS on these cards. So there's a total of six different power profiles depending on where that switch is toggled. So you have a balanced, which is kind of the normal mode. You have a power saver mode and you have a turbo mode. And of course you have custom where you can change everything. Uh, on, you can change the clocks, the states, the fan curve, the power consumption, you can undervolt it, you can do all kinds of stuff. But power consumption on these cards is pretty heavy in comparison to the 70 and 80 series Pascal cards, which only top out around 180. So there is definitely a lot to consider here when it comes to power consumption. So if you wanna look at FPS per watt, Nvidia is definitely winning in that category. It, it definitely goes without saying that Vega has certainly, uh, it's certainly power hungry. That's why you've got two eight pin power plugs on here. And you know, if you're using a workflow though that can take advantage of all of those gigaflops, then you're probably pulling a lot of water from the wall anyway. Last thing I wanna mention though, is there does seem to be an improvement on the fan design, not necessarily in terms of cooling, but aesthetics where they have certainly made the blower style cooler a bit less noisy than it used to be. In fact, it's running right here next to me. I have turned down the fan curve a little bit though, because I didn't want it to be picked up on the mic, uh, but they have made an improvement to the fan. They've made it a little bit larger. There's more surface area, uh, but it does a pretty good job at not being too intrusive. And it has a nice, just smooth feeling to it where back when like the RX 470 and 480 came out that was also using a blower style fan, it just was choppy and was inconsistent and had a, it just was not pleasant to the ears. They've definitely made an improvement to the fan so that's good to see. So as I said in the beginning of this video, if you're looking for a deeper dive into the rabbit hole of all of the specs and all of the architecture when it comes to these new graphics cards from AMD, then definitely check out some of the other journalists out there that are doing a fantastic job of covering that level of detail. Um, but I hope at least what I've showed you guys today gives you some sort of picture of what to expect in a more mainstream consumer who might not be as interested in talking about HPCC or high bandwidth cache controller and stuff like that, because some of you, I know me personally, I'm just like, show me the numbers. And uh, those are some of the numbers I have to present. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Tell me what you guys think of Vega though. I know some of you are gonna be disappointed hoping that this was going to knock Nvidia off of its pedestal of being the fastest GPUs in the world. But I guess it really, again, considers, or you have to really consider what is fastest, right? Is it fastest in floating point precision? Is it fastest in gaming? There's a lot of fastest out there. So you guys tell me what you think. Sound off in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.